Hello ladies and gents, I hope you're well, I hope you had a fantastic day. As you may be able to hear slash see behind me, uh, today we're going to be doing a video all about the chart affair, which is going to be very exciting. The clicking you're probably hearing is a time lapse that will be the opening part of this video. Um, I'm using P mode, which I talked about in a video a little bit ago, uh, because I'm not actually going to be here to manually change those settings. So this is the best case scenario when you're trying to do event work, you need the time lapse to be really quick. But this is going to be the first establishing shot because it is a wide overlook onto the market square from my office window. And then we did get the sun setting behind St. Thomas's Church as well, which is just a magic of the time of year. Um, but today we've got Richard on behind the scenes camera. He's testing out his new handheld version of his Black Magic. So, and today we're going to be shooting on the GH5 with the Sigma 18 to 35. And uh, Top Handle, Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, and just shooting handheld this year. Uh, last year I did a lot of Glycam stuff, last year I did some tripod stuff and etc. It was a little bit of a larger production, trying something different and also trying to keep this um, as time efficient as possible because as you may be able to see on this monitor, which is one of my um, main, main editing monitors, um, I'm actually doing some bits of first response at the moment that I would like to get done today as well. Um, but also I wanted to showcase the fair. So we're now gonna head downstairs um, and see what we can get. Wrong. Off we go, off we go, down to the fair. So what I'm waiting for is I want to do an entry sign to showcase this fair, right? This is perfect lighting, but I need it to go up a bit so we can see it when it goes up. So I'm basically going to stand here and wait until it starts to spin and then roll and then try and time my motion and hope I get it right. A lot of promotional video shooting is mainly just about just about trying to grab as many shots as you can to help give context on where you are and you're really looking to try and build the real feel of the event itself so that's what we're going to try and do now for that shot i was talking about <laughs> A few moments later. So a lot of the stuff we try to do when we're at a fair like this. We're just trying to grab as much context as possible and what we'll do is we'll circle back and we'll try and get people playing the game as well so I can then cut them together. So Richard just asked me a very good question which was about what happens about permission regarding filming people. In most cases you're allowed to film people as well as they're adults. The line I always use and the logic that I use personally is if there's a child or you think they're a minor, ask the adult if they think it's okay. If you really want to be official and really want to like be 100% safe, you'll get a written consent form from that parent. In this context, I would have a pile of forms this big, and it's unlikely that many parents are going to say yes and then go around and then sue me afterwards. So what we try to do here is we just try to be cautious and just be respectful whenever we are going to ask to film people. But most people who are teenagers or even young adults or even adults, they don't really mind being on film because it's part of the whole atmosphere, we're trying to be candid, but also if you can ask and you can interject, it's only after the shot because you don't want to ruin a moment. So sometimes it's really difficult to do that. But that's my logic personally. I haven't had an issue in the three and a half years I've done most of the local events in Salisbury, but you know, it's just up to you and your level of risk and what you also are are feeling comfortable doing yourself and what you feel is comfortable in the situation as i say most people don't really mind so but well i'm sure we'll come on to that a little bit later when i see a child doing something interesting so much i have no idea if it's gonna work <laughs> 15th of the time that i asked it
So something that I like to do whenever we're shooting something like this is I always try and shoot in sequences because what I might do is there's two ways I normally cut it. Number one, you shoot the entire sequence and then you cut it together as one small sequence within the promotional video. Number two, you cut between or cross cut between two separate sequences. So for example, we could do a wide of this one and then a wide of another one over there and then do the same thing and alternate. As long as you have the same number of clips or you have a similar amount of clips, it will work. You can have an additional clip on say something else, but the main thing is about trying to build a story. And whenever we do anything like this, I visualize myself as someone who's walking around, either seeing what's interesting or imagining what would I want to do in Pacific when I'm not falling over. And uh, yeah, it's just about being respectful as well. So don't, if you're gonna, that's why you need a quite multitude of lenses. That's why I like shooting on 18 to uh, 35 because it's the equivalent to 24 to 70, which means I can get in quite close without having to be right next to the person um, and trying to be discreet whenever I do film as well. So I don't ruin the, um, the moment, that's the main thing. So it's just something you have to work around and there's always gonna be people like this gentleman just behind me a moment ago. Um, where they are always going to be allowed in results, just work your way around it. The same logic I follow is try to be as much as invisible as you can. Uh, that's why both me and Richard are both shooting handheld. In this scenario, you're going to drag more attention to yourself, the bigger your rig. So try to keep your rig small and you'll have an easier time. Got a love alarm. But we can blog it if you want. So. A minute ago, I just had an idea about filming this stand as well. But the thing is, I've already done like one gun in Pacific. So it's not gonna make much relevance and it's not gonna be as exciting and not gonna give enough idea of the whole fair itself. If I just film something which is the similar, so we've had a clay shooting already. So I'm mainly looking for stuff like, say for example, if someone was doing these ducks over here, they would work really, really well because they're something very different. So we try and sequence it in the respect that we have like a big ride, like the one behind us or in front of us. And then something smaller, one of the little stands where you can actually stuff you can win. And we try and cut in people enjoying themselves, trying to get the atmosphere, but then also all the little things which otherwise most people would miss because the big stuff, no one's gonna miss. They're huge, really obvious, really fun, but maybe not necessarily something which gives the atmosphere. So I really thought about it when I thought about doing this video. Did I want to do it as a really stylistic, you know, a lot of cut transition through blur or etc. Do I want to do it more cut to music? Personally, I think this is going to fit more cut to music considering I can't use half of what's being played because it's copyrighted. So I'm going to have to work it very closely with the clips I use or overpower the music that was played here on site with the music that I use when it comes to actually cutting it together. So let's just carry on and we'll see what we get. I needed a sign. So we've just done some bumper car filming specifically, which is just made by door. Um, and something I like to do when I do bumper cars is you try and find a subject that's smiling, enjoying themselves and you follow them around because the, the struggle with this is you can leave a stacked off shot and it's just a load of cars going past which is not very exciting and it doesn't really get the atmosphere, doesn't get the feel what you're really looking for is I pick maybe three or four people because it always goes round in a circle so when I've got those three or four people I try to pick them as they come round because they're looking for quick you know, smiles, enjoying it, etc. And uh, then a couple of crashes, hopefully. So maybe I got some, maybe I did, we'll circle back anyway. And uh, we're now gonna go explore again. See you soon. So 
whenever we film any like signs or anything I always try to look for a level of foreground so it adds a bit of depth into the image otherwise it can look a bit plain especially when the background is a piece of scaffolding. Got a little bit of candy floss. Welcome back ladies and gents, so I've just been experimenting a little bit um, with filming these because last year I did them as time lapses to show the speed that they were spinning but something that I'm trying this year is following them like this and I think it's going to work really really well and the reason why is something that we try to use camera movement with is mostly when you want the audience to either feel like you use a locked off shot if they want you to feel secure basically the point I'm trying to make here is there's a level of emotion that comes when it comes to actually showcasing like movement like this. So if I'm following one of the like carriages or etc., and I'm and it's flying around and I'm using the same kind of camera movement, it will it's kind of disorient the viewer a little bit and potentially, hopefully not, but potentially make them feel a little bit sick. And that's exactly how it would feel being on one of those rides. So what we're trying to do whenever we create a film, especially a promotional film like this is we try to emulate the same emotion which someone would feel if they were on that ride in Pacific. So we're going to use the same thing, and I did the same thing on, on the ride over here um, that's going like this, specifically. So, yeah, I thought that would be valuable, and the whole point of this vlog is just as I think of things, we're just going to try and throw it in, and hopefully you can actually hear me. But as you can see, we're on set, so I'll see you soon. So we're just wrapping up, so we're just waiting for this one to turn on so that I can capture it spinning and then I'm gonna probably do another lap round just grab any other like oh my god this is such a fun fair etc and then to kind of wrap it up really I mean the time lapse upstairs has probably died or finished so that's the opening shot we might also cut back into it uh, at the end or I might use a shot I got earlier which is some, uh, a couple getting some candy floss and walking away from the lens sometimes they really really work well when you fade them out but we'll see this is only a quick social media video so we don't need much i've probably got more than enough coverage but i wanted to experiment as well and uh yeah it's a reach to coming down so i'm gonna get this now it's starting hello ladies and gents and welcome back to uh, this video that's going to wrap up this video that is a wrap so uh i ran into a couple of people i know which is fantastic but uh, yeah, all the best to them if they're watching and they had fun and I hope they enjoyed the fair while they were here. But uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this process and took some value from this video in Pacific. And uh, I'm now gonna go and edit this video so I can get it out a little bit later today. But if you would like to hear how we can help you and your business grow through video, then find my information somewhere around this video and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. And I can't wait to hear about you and your business very, very soon. And I'll see you very, very soon.